Hey everyone, James again with TFB TV. Now, a lot of you know that I'm a licensed concealed weapons instructor. I'm also a total CCW gun junkie, and I also like the old shorts. You guys know that. I'm originally from Florida. Now I live in Louisiana. It's shorts weather like nine months out of the year. So I find myself 75% of the time wearing what I'm wearing right now, shorts and a t-shirt. So of course, one of the questions that's been the most asked in the comments section on TFB TV, especially every time I go into a concealed carry gun review, is how do you carry a gun if you're wearing shorts without a belt and a t-shirt? Well, Now, before I get further into talking about the pros and cons of each method of carry and giving the caveats as to safety, I got to make a general comment. There are a lot of ways to carry and none of them are perfect. It's not exactly a hard science. Certainly there are ways to do it wrong and certainly there are better methods of carry, but there's a lot of gray area in between that just works better for some people and doesn't work for other people and that's fine. The important thing is you want it to be safe and you want it to be tactically sound. Oh, shoot, one last thing, I almost forgot. The weather is like perfect right now, 70 degrees, summer is right around the corner. So when the weather starts to turn up like this, that's when I start assembling my Beach Jam playlist. Now, like it or not, I'm sharing it with you this year. Go down to the description, there's a link to Google Play. I get nothing from it, no commission, no nothing. I'm doing it because I love you guys. So you guys might not like this playlist, but first of all, you're wrong. Second of all, would Hickok 45 make this playlist for you? Do you think Hickok 45 gives a shit if you spend all summer trying to get to the cake? I care, so I made this for you. All right, let's get into these five carry methods. Now first, the belly band. A lot of people don't really understand the band. So I'm gonna help you understand the band right now. I absolutely love the belly band. In fact, of all these methods, this is the best one, and this is the only one that I can really wholeheartedly recommend. So what is the belly band? Well, the belly band's a piece of elastic that has a pouch that you can fit your Glock into. Of course, why would you carry anything else? You can fit your Glock in there, and it'll also take a magazine. It's lightweight, it distributes weight evenly across your body. You don't need to actually wear it like on your stomach, but you can put it on however you like, and you can wear it however you like, as high or as low. Some people will even, they'll use it for appendix carry and they'll carry it down low like in their pants um, and use that as like a little extra retention. That works, but you can carry it appendix. Um, you can carry it three o'clock and you can carry it small back if you want to. Now typically how I'll carry, I'll get just about to my shirt line and then I'll carry small back. When you do that, you can carry just about anything. And to prove my point, I've got the FN 509 right here. This is a big honkin' duty size gun. You can carry about as big of a gun as you want to in the belly band, especially small of back. And it's pretty fast. As far as safety goes, it keeps the trigger guard covered. And then flexibility is fantastic. You can wear it just about anywhere on your body. So I'm a huge fan. All right, before we move on to number two, numbers two, three, four, five, I don't really like a lot. If I'm carrying in shorts, 95% of the time I'm using the belly band, I might use one of these other ways if I absolutely have to. So I'm gonna present them to you anyways. Uh, number four is the sticky holster. Now, what is the sticky holster? The sticky holster, it is what it says it is. It's sticky on the outside, it's slick on the inside. So as you can see here with the sticky holster, you can appendix carry, you can switch it around to three o'clock if you want, but you have printing. So if you go, I think the magic spot is like right here over the old right butt cheek. Uh, you get no printing whatsoever. And it's a little bit like boys to men. Not too fast, not too slow. And I'm not sure how much faster appendix is, but you have not only printing, but the risk of shooting your dick off, which I really don't like. I mean, you feel like you can take a grazer on the old butt cheek and you're gonna be okay, maybe a flesh wound but there's some stuff down there that can't be replaced. So you got good flexibility. You can tuck it in your waistband just about anywhere. And the sticky holster works by using the sticky side to kind of stay in place, create friction and stay in your waistband, but it's slick on the inside, which allows you to draw your pistol out. If you don't work with it, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't practice with it, there's a good chance that you're gonna go to draw and you're gonna bring that holster out 
with your pistol. So that's something to be cognizant of and a huge drawback. Also, you have no retention. That is the principle of the sticky holster. They're slippery to make it easier to get out. And because they're not retained in your waistband or stuck to a belt, it has to be easy to get the gun out so you're not ripping out the entire holster. So they're small, they're inexpensive, they work, it's an option. I don't highly recommend them, but they're an option. Now moving on to number three. Number three is just straight up pocket carry. Now what sucks about pocket carry? Well, first of all, there are not a lot of guns that you can really get in your pocket. And if your pockets are too baggy, it's easy to get tangled and twisted whenever you're trying to go and retrieve your gun. If your pockets are too tight, it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna print, and it's also going to be difficult to retrieve it from your pocket. So pocket carry, it works, but it's really not that great of an option. It's an option, not a good one. I also highly recommend you look into pocket holsters because you're asking for a negligent discharge if you're just carrying in your pocket with nothing else. Number four, and this is perhaps the most controversial, is clip carry. Let's talk about clip carry. Clip carry is carrying with, you see this little metal clippy thing here? And that's clipping it in your waistband. This is the most minimalist way you can carry other than straight up Mexican carry uh, with, with just tucking a gun in your waistband. After all, it does work pretty well. You get great flexibility. You can put it anywhere in your waistband. It gets great concealment. It adds almost no bulk. What I don't like about this, trigger guard's totally unprotected. I would be worried, even though you can really access it quickly. I mean, I'll give it that. Um, you can access the, the gun quickly. You're all adults, use your discretion, but I would be worried, especially if I was appendix carrying uh, a gun without anything covering the trigger guard. So that's not to say that people don't do it though. You've got Clip Draw, which they're in business, right? They make custom clips for Glocks, Smith & Wessons, they make universal clips. kel even has a line of clips for their 380s, PF9s, and so on. So while they don't seem like the safest choices and you don't hear people talking about them a lot, you know that there are people out there doing it. So in any event, if you decide to do that, I highly recommend maybe you look into like a Raven Vanguard or a Kydex trigger cover some way to make that work if you like that as an option. And finally, for number five, the best kind of carry, the most fashionable kind of carry, fanny pack carry. Yeah, a lot of you are gonna be going out to the beach and you're not gonna have a shirt or you're not gonna be able to conceal under a shirt. Or, hell, I don't know, maybe in some states, this might not even count as concealed carry. So there are a lot of reasons why you might do this but i'll tell you one reason not to do it and that's speed because this is not fast i mean you've got to unzip to deploy produce get a good grip on it before you can fire now that all said this is a pretty handy way to carry too not only does it look good but you've got you can keep your pistol in your main compartment and then you even have on most fanny packs a little sub compartment you can keep a spare magazine, and if you're going to the beach, a little zinc on you. So it's a pretty utilitarian mode of carry, which is one reason why I like it, um, but it is slow. I mean, it's relatively safe, I guess, if you're keeping nothing in the main compartment. And I mean, even though you've got an exposed trigger, I mean, it's in its own compartment. So I guess it's gotta be safe enough. But God, look how slow that is. So again, that's in the department of, you're just having it. You know, you just have it. And if you need it, it's there. You're just not gonna be able to get to it in like less than a second and a half or, or two seconds. So uh, just something to be aware of. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay safe this summer. If you have any questions about these carry methods, ask them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks as usual to Ventura Munitions for putting up the ammo for this video. Love those guys. And thank you most of all to you guys watching. Click that subscribe button, help us out on Patreon, whatever you can do. I'd appreciate, take care, see you next week.